Hi, this is John Blyler, and I'm here at Semacon West 2014. Today I'm talking to Ludo de Ferm, who is the PhD and Executive Vice President at IMEC. Ludo, I have just a few questions. Okay. First, the semiconductor world is always facing uh, challenges of some kind, but there are two big ones. Uh, one is market consolidation, and uh, this is occurring at all levels. Uh, and the other is uh, the uh, scaling and cost challenges at the lower nodes. How will these challenges affect the industry? Okay. Uh, I think personally that I would say it's a high cost environment, you know, to scale down. There are less players, as you already heard. So that means it will be difficult for the market to go to the next nodes if cost is not going down per function, if the performance is not going up, and if you cannot scale down at the same time. If you can combine the three, there's economic relevance. And that means there will be products which will be cheaper with more functions. And of course, you know, there are a lot of applications we need more. If one of these components is missing, it will stall the, the going to the next node. So for instance, if the cost becomes higher per function, or if the performance is not increased per node, or if you cannot scale it down properly without sufficient yield, then you will have a slowdown of scaling. But if these three are fulfilled, what they were in the past, scaling will go on, new products will come, and they will be introduced at the market. And the players who play the game can change. They are consolidating today, but they're becoming stronger and bigger often. So. I hope that answers a little bit your question. It doesn't mean uh, I'll set which players are going to be there in five years from now. Eh? This can be completely unknown. That's a, that's a good co uh, caveat. Well, let me, let me kind of build on that then. Um, you didn't say this exactly, but one of the things this hints at is, you know, new players and new ways to, to meet uh, this, these, these three challenges. And one of those might be new materials, which, of course, is happening all the time. And one is... Um, I know Europe in general seems to be leading the charge on the graphene technology. Yeah. How that type of material will affect the design manufacturing process? Is it going to be similar to CMOS or is, are we looking at something quite a bit different? Okay. So, you know, in Europe there is a flagship, they call Graphene flagship. I think up to now there are more than 120 companies involved out of 23 or 24 countries. So it's a starting program. So it fits within European Horizon 2020 approach. That means they have a roadmap to look at new technologies for the next seven years. Now, 2D materials, because graphene is a 2D material, it has a lot of properties. I mean, it's conductive, it's, it has a heat conduction, which is okay, it's strong. So you can do something with it, but what? I mean, if you look to the program itself, people look at optical electronics, they look at spintronics, they look to all the new kind of stuff you could perhaps do with graphene. So, but there is a way to go. It's not clear today what will be successful. So if you look at IMEC, we're using the 2D graphene for new optical electro components, modulators, etc., because the material is suitable for it. Will it be suitable for spectronic devices, which can be a next generation of CMOS, because it it's, uh, toggles the spin instead of electrons. Huh? So it could be, but it's not proven that it will be good enough for that because you have to be able to integrate it, make it yielding. It's not for making one transistor or one sensor or one optical component. You have to make systems. So this is certainly a way off. So I, I cannot say what the future will bring, but it's certainly an interesting material. That's why also we're contributing to that flagship. Metrology seems to be taking on a bigger role in the semiconductor manufacturing uh, business. It's always had a big role, but it seems to be, uh, uh, at the lower nodes, more of a focus. What uh, does metrology look like in the future, yeah. with all that we've said? Yeah. I think it's clear. Uh, we go smaller, and not only smaller, we go denser, more complex. And you know it's not straightforward, what I call linear scaling with the same kind of technologies. So if you look at quadruple kind of patterning, and things like that, it's very complex. So what do you have to do? You have to be able to know what you're doing, so you have to measure. And what do you measure? You me measure thickness variations because your focus will be different. You have to look at defects, so you have to find them because you have to detect them at nanometer scale. You have to know a lot of the structures in your design to know 
what's happening at that spot because it's not the same anymore. I mean, you cannot say, okay, we do a generic technology and it works for all kinds of designs. It will not. So yes, inspection is important. Measurements, if you measure things, you know, and you can feed it back. So a lot of systems, like also the optical systems, need the feedback. How can you change your exposure kind of things towards the design? And if you cannot measure, there's no way to do so. In the past, you didn't need to do that because you had your technology, you had the measurement tools instead, and you made it production worthy. And it was not so much linked to design because it was abstracted from the design. Because of all the complexity we're introducing, it will be completely linked to your systems and your design. So you need much more metrology for the future and you need a feedback loop. So that's why it becomes crucial. If you cannot measure, you don't know. Yeah. You will measure at the end. If it's failing at the end, you have to redesign. You know what it costs. Huh? It's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Prohibitive, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, Ludo. Thanks.